Hey everybody, Mike Wrench, Mike. We are back from the Hot Rod Power Tour 2022, where Randy from, of course, Auto Auction Rebuilds and I successfully, successfully navigated 2,500 miles all across the country. Never got lost once. Yep, super fun trip. But now that we're back home, yep, we gotta get dirty again. And first on the list of fixes, yep, my workhorse. This is the Mercedes GL 450. I love the car. I use this to drag all of my cars home from wherever I find them. And she's performed pretty well. I'm just gonna say pretty well because we have an issue right now that could be potentially one of the most expensive fixes I have ever encountered. And I'm really nervous. Yeah, I gotta tell you, love the car, love the ride, now that I got all the tires <laughs> aligned and everything. And I love you too, little S500 with the Razorback sticker. Yep, I love you. But this is the one we're focusing on today. 2008 Mercedes GL450 that has a problem. All right, well, she's a little dirty, dirty, but that is just because I drive her everywhere. And I use her for all kinds of heavy lifting and moving and pulling and hauling. The issue is the key no longer works. All right, take a look at what happens. Okay, here's the mileage right there, 196, 682. And when I turn the key, I get nothing. I get nothing. She doesn't even try to start. And at first I thought it was the battery. And then I did re realized, well, if it was the battery, nothing would light up things are lit up. So what's the problem? Well, it's one of two things. Yikes. So if you know the car, you know it's been pretty good for me. I mean, I've literally just had to, um, okay, I've replaced the air conditioning compressor. That went out, not a big deal. Okay, I replaced the rear SAM, which then went out as well. And I couldn't get any trailer lights to work. Not a big deal. Then I replaced, Oh gosh, <laughs> the list goes on. I replaced the upper control arms and the tie rods on both sides. Yep, on the front of the car. No big deal. A lot of work on the left side. The right side was pretty easy, but on the left side, you got some things in the way. Um, I'm still kind of working on the radio that shuts off by itself. Other than all those issues, I love the car. Typical Mercedes, right? You love them and you hate them. This key has always, can you hear it? It's always unlocked the car. It's never locked the car. Nothing. I get nothing here. So I cleaned the key really well, and I came out to start it, and I got nothing. So the problem we're having is either with the key or what I'm hoping it is not, and that is the EIS, the Electronic Ignition System, which is a pain in the bootay to replace. Yeah, that gets real expensive because you have to get the part, you have to get the car to Mercedes, and they have to code the part to the car to the key. All three have to be talking in unison. You know what the EIS says, it's where this plugs in on the dash. Yeah, it's easy to get to, but I hope I don't have to replace it. All right, let's take a look. We're going to show you the EIS, then we're going to show you what I purchased from the Mercedes dealer for almost $300 that I hope will fix the issue. Let's do it. Okay, so to get to the EIS, it's really not that difficult. This piece right here basically just pops out from the back, okay? You can leave it attached, no big deal. I did remove the ashtray, which is under here, and there's two torque screws to remove that, okay? Once you get that loose, you have two screws holding the radio in, you pull these little flaps down, okay? They go down like this, and you can get behind it, and you can give it a push. I guess I haven't pulled them down yet. Okay, let's see, there it is. Okay, so now this will come out. There it is. What you want to access is behind there. This is your EIS. Well, I just put the radio ah, right in the way. There, now can you see? Okay, this is the EIS. This is what you put the, the actual key into. And I need to get a little screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? Where's my screwdriver? 
Dad, gum it. Hold on, we'll be right back. Okay, there is your electronic ignition switch right here. And there's a little special socket that you can get with four teeth, and they kind of fit in right here, and it removes it. These things are never super duper tight, and so I just basically get a screwdriver or two and turn this counterclockwise and see how this moves. See how it moves? Okay, yeah, all you have to do is to get it to loosen up just a little bit, and then you can get your fingers to do the rest. It's not a difficult procedure. Okay, there it is. See it let go. She just let go and she comes out like this. Now, reach behind here and you got it. This is your EIS. This is your part number. You want to take a note of that. A1654513OH. I'm missing a number. 164545. 1308. That's the correct number right there. So if I do have to order one, I know the number. Okay, if this goes bad, cha ching. Okay, very expensive. And then you got, like I said, you got to take the car to the dealer. What I want to try first, though, is what I received from the dealer right here. You know what that is? Yep, that's a new key. All right, since all the cool YouTubers are showing themselves more and more on their videos, I thought I would do the same. Why do I want to deny anybody? this this beautifulness right here this is my let me cut the address this is my receipt from mercedes a new remote key i did not get the blade because if you have the same kind of a key the blade will work if you have the old-fashioned key not like this with the chrome on the sides but one that's all black you're going to get a new one like this and then you got to order the key the blade itself so i spent 308 dollars 18 cents right there for the remote if i were to add the price of the key blade which is this part right here the price would have gone up almost a hundred dollars that right there yep a hundred bucks a hundred dollars for this but one thing i did not have to do is pay to get this programmed it comes programmed already good to go so we're going to open this up real quick and then we're going to give her a quick little try okay i might even leave the uh, EIS kind of unplugged right there just so we can make sure that everything is fine. Ooh, see what $308.18 I'll get you? Shiny stuff! Yes! Okay, so I don't even know. I think this you get batteries with this. Okay, so let's just kind of see what's going to happen. We're going to put it in. Here we go. That's a great sign right there. Okay, here we go. This, please start. Please start, because if this starts right now, then I don't have to buy the new EIS. Here we go. E-I-E-I-O. Whoochoo! Here it is. Thank you so much, man upstairs. This is gonna be the shortest video in the history of videos. This fixed the problem. I'm so happy. I am so happy because Mike bought a car today and he's got to go pick it up. And this is what I use to drag all my cars home. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, one problem solved. Now we have to address, oh gosh, what else do we want to do for the video? I have an SRS problem, which is the seatbelt buckle right down here. And I got a leak in the engine. Do I want to do another video or, or do I want to continue this one? What are we going to do? Let's power on. And for my next display of mechanical aptitude or ineptitude, I present to you one oxygen sensor to go in the mighty GL450. Yep, I ran the codes and this could be the problem why the engine is stumbling from time to time, okay? Uh, we came up with the right sensor after okay after the catalytic converter so i got this on my favorite website rockauto.com we're going to install this and see we'll probably do a little prayer too these things are super 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 easy to install as long as you can get to them in fact you can get generic ones if you want to splice in the wiring you just got to be real good at that i went ahead and bought an original one we'll get this under the car in the car and then we'll get on top of the car and see how we're doing Woo!
easiest repair ever, I'm hoping. Let's see how she likes it. Let's see if she likes it at all. I think she does, because she's sounding pretty good. Oh, the radio's decided to work. That's big time. Okay, let me get my code reader. We'll clear, we'll clear the codes again, and then we will uh, see if the engine, check engine light comes back. All right, here's the error code. One of a couple, but this is the main one we're trying to deal with right here. Right O2 sensor after the cat heating capacity is too low, P0141. So we've replaced that. Let's see if I can back this up, clear it. Clear the fault codes. Check engine light is gone. SRS light is still there. Tire pressure monitor is still there. It's been there forever, but by Jove, I think we fixed it. Yes, she's idling good, she's happy, and we have lived to tell another tale. Okay, we did it. That's gonna complete the repairs on the Mighty GL450. It's also gonna complete my time with the beard. Have you checked this out the past week? All those walk around videos and everything that I did, I decided to let my hair grow. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's a little more silver than what I had hoped. See? I don't like it. So anyway, we'll probably go to like a Fu Manchu and then we'll go down to a soul patch or some kind of a 70s porn stash and then we'll get rid of the whole thing and we'll start over again. But I haven't been able to do this since I was a news anchor. Now that I'm no longer a news anchor, I get to do what I want to do. So, enjoy it. You probably won't see it in the next video. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Those uh, views, those subscribers have really jumped up especially since I did a couple of those IAA walk-arounds. And we'll continue that. And, of course, we'll continue fixing cars and getting our fingers all dirty. Okay? Have a great day.